Hello, my name is Yvonne and you are watching Go Yvonne. You are watching the third episode of my 10 years in China series. If this is the first episode you are watching, make sure to watch the trailer for this series so you know who I am and why I am making this series. In this episode, I will be sharing 10 of my favorite places in Beijing with you. I've been living in Beijing since 2013 and I really enjoy living here. The city has changed a lot, some for the good, some for the not so good. But nonetheless, I think it's a great city to visit or to live in. Beijing is an enormous city and there's always something to do for the people who live here, but also for the people who come here to travel. So without further ado, let's get started and let's start with number 10. Number 10 on the list is the 798 Art District, an area that used to host workplaces for Chinese artists, but that has now turned into an area with galleries, shops, cafes and Instagram worthy photo spots. It's a fun place to walk around every couple of months as shops and galleries seem to change here on a regular basis. Definitely visit the 798 Art District if you have some extra time in the city. At number 9 we find a very modern and popular area, Sanli Toon. I had to put Sanli Toon on my list of favorite places in Beijing, mostly because this is one of the few places where I can actually find clothes that I can fit into. I am 186 and finding clothes here that actually fit me is quite the challenge. Another reason I like to come to Stanley Toon is because of the wide variety of restaurants you can find here. If you've seen a previous episode, you know how much I love food and this is a great place to find a lot of different restaurants. Enough about Stanley Toon, let's leave the hustle and bustle of this area behind us and go somewhere more quiet. Let's go to our number 8. Let's go to Rotan Park. Rotan Park is a beautiful park that I love visiting. It's actually one of my favorite parks to go to if I need to film. The park is in a central location. But what's even better, in my opinion, is that it is a quiet park. You'll mostly see Beijingers in this park who are going for a stroll, doing their morning tai chi, or are playing table tennis in the fitness area. The park is quite large, which is nice because it never feels really busy. If you can't make it to Rotan Park, make sure to check out one of the many other parks Beijing has to offer. Let's leave Rotan Park behind us and head to the outskirts for number 7, the Summer Palace. The Summer Palace is a beautiful palace. There are lovely buildings that were once used by the emperors to leave the heat of summer behind. There is a big lake that you can go around on one of the many paddle boats and there are park-like areas to walk around. It's a must-see when you visit Beijing. The reason the Summer Palace isn't higher on this list is because it is a little bit far out of the city and it can take some time to get there. We are moving on to number 6, the beautiful Temple of Heaven. I like to come here early in the morning when the locals arrive. I love seeing them dancing together, playing jenzu or using water and big paint brushes to write calligraphy. After a walk through the park that is part of the area, I move on to the building that represents the Temple of Heaven the Hall of Prayer. This is the Hall of Prayer and this is where the emperors used to come and pray for a good harvest and fall. And as you can see behind me, it's a really impressive building. It's so beautiful with so many details, so absolutely worth visiting. If you go to the Temple of Heaven early and you walk through the park, you have the chance to see a marriage market. Here you'll see parents or grandparents trying to find a partner for their child or grandchild. Definitely something very unique. We have entered the top 5 and are halfway down my list of the best places to see in Beijing. And number 5 is right here behind me. On number 5 we find the lakes. Beijing has a couple of beautiful lakes. It has Beihai, Hohai and Suzhouhai that are all worth visiting. They are great places to get away from the hectic of the city. Come here to see Beijing men take a swim in one of the lakes or throw out their fishing line in the hope they'll catch something. If you come in the morning, you'll see people doing their workout at one of the many outdoor fitness centers, which I think is fun to watch as it gives you a really good idea of what life in China can be like. In the evening, the area can get busy. The many restaurants and bars attract tourists who are there to enjoy a summer evening, live music and a cold drink. Firstly, I'm not a really big fan of this, but if you like people watching when you're at a restaurant or a bar, definitely check out the Hohai area because that is the perfect place for that. Right around the lakes, we find our number 4, the hutongs. I love the hutongs and I'm sure you love them too once you see them and wander around them as they are really unique to Beijing. 
Although I've been living in Beijing for seven years and I've walked through many of the hutongs, it never gets boring. There's just so much to see. There are a lot of famous and popular hutongs like Wu Daoying, Nan Lu Guxiang, and Lu Li Chang, but in my opinion, the ones where the tourists don't go are the best. There, you'll find hidden restaurants with delicious baozi, or little shops where the people living in the hutongs buy their vegetables, meat, and rice or noodles. Neighbors sit outside on summer days just talking or playing card games while eating sunflower seeds. We have entered the top three on my list of my favorite places here in Beijing. For number three, we have to leave the city behind us. Number three on the list is the Great Wall. The Great Wall is an absolute must when you come to China. In the 10 years I've been in China, I've visited the wall quite a few times and it always impresses me. It's such a massive construction and to think people built this hundreds of years ago is just amazing. There are restored parts that are very popular. But if you have the chance, go to a part that's less popular and not entirely restored to get the real Great Wall experience. You'll enjoy the fact that there are less people and seeing unrestored parts. The hike up there will be challenging, but the views will be more rewarding. If you are up for it, you can even spend the night camping on the Great Wall. That way you can see the sunset and the sunrise over the wall. Well, unless you get stuck in a thunderstorm like I did. On number two we find another park, Jingsheng Park. Jingsheng Park used to be the imperial garden that belonged to the Forbidden City, but was opened as a park to the public about a hundred years ago. If you could only visit one park during your time in Beijing, choose Jingsheng Park. The park is known for its various pavilions, hills and some interesting stories. The main reason you should visit this park though is one specific hill. The hill that gives you a great view over Beijing and a stunning view over the Forbidden City. It's only when you stand on top of this hill in Jingsheng Park that you realize how large the Imperial Palace is. Bonus tip, go right around sunset to get the best light for your photos. But keep in mind that you won't be the only one who wants those shots. And Jingsheng Park brings us to number one. But before I share my number one place to visit in Beijing with you, please give this video a like and subscribe if you don't want to miss the upcoming episodes. In the next episode of this 10 years in China series, I'll be talking about teaching in China. So if you are interested in that, stay tuned. Time to reveal the number one. While we are standing on top of Dingshan Park, we can see the number one on the list, the Forbidden City. If you come to China and can only do one thing, go see the Forbidden City. This enormous palace has been the center of China for 500 years and this is where most of the important ceremonies took place. With almost a thousand buildings within the city walls, the palace area is huge and you can easily spend a day here to explore the different palace buildings, the park and more. It's like you're stepping back in time once you walk past the walls that surround the palace. It is impossible not to be impressed by this magnificent building. With the Forbidden City taking the number one spot on my list of favorite places in Beijing, we have come to the end of this video. Let me know in the comments which place you would like to go to. And I'll see you in the next episode.